Hello, how are you doing? I have a big pile of new books that I'm excited to read and that I'm eager to talk about and discuss. And you know, one day I'm sure that all of these many piles of books are going to fall on top of me. I'll be crushed to death beneath them. It's inevitable, isn't it? It's going to happen one of these days, but it'll be quite a happy way to go. Um, anyway, I'm going to dive right into talking about these books. First off, I have a new Everyman's Library edition of the novel Independent people by Haldor Laxness. Now Haldor Laxness won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1955 and this novel is about a stubborn self-reliant sheep farmer and his daughter and how that sheep farmer wants independence from the rest of society but his daughter wants independence from him so there's that sort of tension between them and the generations um, but he also incorporates elements of Iceland saga uh, mythology into his novels, um, though this is meant to be a very realistic novel. I've only read one of his novels called Under the Glacier before, so I'm looking forward to reading more of his work. And I actually went to Iceland back in 2016, and you can go visit the home of Haldor Laxness, which is now a museum. Uh, but when I went, uh, just during that time of year, um, it happened to be closed. Um, so I was able to take a picture outside of the house but I wasn't actually able to go inside of it. Uh, but I absolutely love these Everyman's editions because they have such beautiful covers, but also um, they come with introductions. So this has an introduction by John Freeman. But then I also absolutely love how on the inside it has a chronology of the author's life and their various publications alongside bigger historical events. And so you can kind of see this chronology of where their work fits in, you know, with large history. Next is new fiction, which sounds so creative. Uh, it is The Employees, a workplace novel of the 22nd century by Olga Raven. And this is published by Lolly Editions, which is a relatively new publisher. And so this takes place on a spaceship. You know how recently I've been really interested in sci-fi, and this sounds like a very literary science fiction novel. So it takes place on this spaceship, which is inhabited uh, by humans and not non-humans, so sort of androids. And it's about how they discover a planet that has a number of objects which um, they take on board and become kind of consumerist objects to them. And the novel is structured in interviews with different employees on this spaceship who uh, both are human and non-human. So it's looking at these ideas of what it means to be human and our relationships with work and, and whether our work defines our humanity or not. Then I have the Virago book of women Travelers, edited by Mary Morris. And this is a collection of all sorts of travel writing uh, way back from the 17th century up into the 20th century. And I think it's really interesting how it takes this slant on women's travel uh, throughout the world because, you know, traditionally uh, exploring is seen as this sort of like male vocation and, and travel writing is uh, often by a lot of male writers. And so it's interesting to look at the perspective of women and and their journeys, you know, across to all places in the, the globe. And, uh, and it'll be interesting to read this, you know, at this time when we can't travel all that much internationally, um, or at least international travel is quite difficult. And so, yeah, it collects writings from a whole variety of really fascinating uh, writers, um, including Mary Kinsley and uh, Edith Wharton and Willa Cather and Vita Sackville West, um, up until more current times, uh, like Annie Dillard and Joan Didion. So yeah, a really fascinating collection of writers. Next, I have two books by a writer who is one of my favorite new writers that I've talked about a lot over the course of the past year. Uh, that is the great French writer Annie Ernaux. And these are two books um, published by Fitzcarraldo Editions who are bringing out a lot of her work and back catalog. Uh, thank God for that so that we can finally have it in English. Um, so the first is a book called A uh, Girl's Story that was published earlier this year, and it recounts a summer in 1958 when the author uh, was working as a camp counselor and she had sex for the first time, and how this encounter and relationship 
relationship really impacted uh, her subsequent relationships over the course of her life and really shaped her life as a writer. So she describes that whole experience. And then a more recent book um, that was just published is A Man's Place. And this is about the author's father's life and how he really lived in the shadow of uh, this shame that he felt because of his economic and social position. He often really struggled to provide for his family and so it describes his life in this way and how this obviously went on to impact the the author's life her herself and you know and as I've talked about in the past the way this author writes about her own personal history as a way of looking at the social and political history of her surrounding society as well I think is so profound and moving. Then I have two books which are kind of seasonally appropriate in that they're very spooky you know I'm wearing my orange you know to go along with sort of Halloween theme and these two books um, yeah are, are uh, one is a reprint of a very old book and then the other one is a debut novel uh, which is meant to be very spooky and sort of like haunted. Um, so the first is Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanot and uh, I'm trying to capture how absolutely beautiful uh, this new edition is because you can see there's this sort of red uh, foil um, which kind of shines and you know has this sort of blood color and I first read this novella uh, a couple years ago um, as part of like a booktube project um, for also watching the film adaptation of it or a film that was inspired by this novella called uh, Vampire and uh, yeah Carmilla is this uh, story this vampire story um, which predated the novel Dracula and really inspired um, that that novel and uh, so it was written in the 1800s by an Irish writer and it's about a, a woman who um, is in Austria and she meets this other mysterious woman um, who she falls under the spell of and uh, about their relationship with each other which is you know kind of vaguely se sexual and kind of uh, like a lesbian love affair and uh, yeah it just becomes very dark and twisted and uh, I just absolutely loved this story so I think this is a really great new edition. Next as I said this is a debut novel uh, called The Apparition Phase by Will McLean clean and this is set in the 1970s in a British suburban town and is about two children um, Tim and Abby who uh, are quite bored with their lives growing up and are really fascinated by uh, the supernatural and hauntings and they so they decide to fake a ghost picture but then there are unexpected consequences of trying to fake this ghost picture and the story goes off from there to tell a very creepy tale. And I have another novel uh, which also coincidentally has the word apparition in the, the title of it, uh, like this book. So uh, this is Men and Apparitions by Lynn Tillman. And this is a novel about a character named Zeke, who is an anthropologist and a cultural commentator, uh, looking at family photographs and the manifestations of, of gender and how that's represented. And he has his own troubled past and family history. So he decides to focus as a research project on himself Himself and his own history and looking at the anthropology of, of that and so yeah I think it's a, a sort of interesting look at gender and the meaning of, of masculinity and, and what that means and this is quite a respected writer um, that has been up for a number of awards and has written things before but I've never read before uh, but this sounds really good. I have a new collection of short stories by one of my favorite Irish writers that is Kevin Barry and it's called That Old Country Music. Uh, these are stories of about characters from the west of Ireland uh, that are often about love and catastrophe and he writes in this really interesting way about how old Ireland is sort of brushing up against uh, new Ireland and sort of the modern world and uh, I loved his novel Night Boat to Tangier and his novel Beetlebone is absolutely uh, amazing so uh, yeah I'm very excited to read these. Ramifications by Daniel Saldana Paris and it's translated from the Spanish by Christine Christina McSweeney. So this is a book about a narrator who's trying to make sense of his past and his childhood and especially um, trying to get over the fact that his mother abandoned their family in 1994 to join the Zapatista uprising in Mexico and it left him with an emotionally distant father and uh, an older sister who couldn't really be bothered with him. So he had a very lonely childhood and then many years later in his adulthood he's 
he's looking back on this time and trying to make sense of it, but also trying to discover what happened to his mother. Then I have a copy of the newly translated book I is Another by John Foss, the great Norwegian writer who earlier this year was listed for the Booker International Prize for his book The Other Name. And this is all part of the same sequence. So that first book uh, was called Septology 1 and 2, and this is called Septology 3 through Five. Um, so it's sort of these sequence of books which look at a man who are two men who are doppelgangers and who are both painters but who have very different lives and it's difficult to describe his writing. He has such this an odd sort of like philosophical take on life um, that sort of looks at memory in a very interesting way. So he's sort of traveling throughout his day and not a lot is actually going on uh, but he's having these encounters with these memories and these past versions of himself. So yeah, it's a very strange way of looking at identity and time. And uh, I think this in this sequence, he sort of looks back much more on his childhood and his sort of development and how he came to, to where he was. So yeah, I absolutely loved his first part. I know it sounds very cerebral, but I got really into it and thought it was so fascinating and unique and like nothing I've read before, so I'm very keen to read more by him. Ex Libris 100 Books to Read and Reread by Michiko Kakutani, uh, the great book critic um, who, you know, I think is one of the most respected book critics in the United States. And uh, this book is looking back on her personal reading life and the books that have really shaped her and the books that have sort of informed how she responds to literature in general. And uh, first off, this is a really beautiful edition of a, of a book. And I mean, it's a real book lover's book, you know, and, and on the inside, it has this sort of like uh, the from the personal library and you can write your own name in there. Um, but I think it's really interesting how she goes about writing about her personal take on all of these books, really crisscrossing between uh, more recent books like Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and then more like classic uh, literature like Sherwood Anderson uh, and W.H. Auden. And yeah, and and, um, and so it it go through like some you know individual titles that have really shaped her and then others are sort of like groups of books um, by authors that have really influenced her um, like uh, David Finkel and uh, Toni Morrison and Vladimir Nabokov and uh, yeah so really you know fascinating you know and obviously I love lists of books and so it's just fascinating to go through and look at the lists of the books that have really shaped her as as a person so you know, this is a real book to be sort of like treasured. Daily Rituals, Women at Work, How Great Women Make Time, Find Inspiration, and Get to Work. Uh, so this is by Mason Curry, who several years ago published a book uh, that was also called Daily Rituals and examined a number of different uh, famous people's lives. Um, but I think there was only 17 women included in that, that list. So I think this book is trying to sort of make up for that fact and really concentrate on the lives of many great women and you know and it focuses on a lot of writers lives um, like it says in this sort of spiral here uh, like Dorothy Parker and Susan Sontag and Zadie Smith but it also goes in to the lives of uh, artists like Frida Kahlo and uh, Coco Chanel and uh, great filmmakers like Agnes Varda and I think it's filled with a lot of just sort of quirky facts about how these different artists uh, made room in their lives to do their work amongst you know sort of the busyness of life so it describes how like Kate Chopin in order to write she wore earmuffs to escape from the noise of the family around her so it sounds like a fun book to sort of like flip through and read different parts of of uh, people who really interest you. Strangers Essays on the Human and Non-Human by Rebecca Tamas. These are essays that look at our relationship with the natural world by considering links between uh, politics and history and folklore and the environment and it looks at particular cases that are kind of quirky like colliding planets and thinking stones and transformative cockroaches. I think the author Max Porter is quite a fan of this author um, who's also published poetry in the past so yeah I think it's really interesting perspective that she gives. Toto Among the Murderers by Sally J. Morgan. I love the title 
title and the cover of this novel, but I don't think it has anything directly to do with The Wizard of Oz. It's set in 1973 in Britain and is about a young woman named Jude, um, who her friends nickname her Toto, um, so that's why that's in the, the title. And she has just graduated from art college recently, and she doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life, so she's spending a lot of time traveling and drinking and getting stoned. And in the background, uh, there's the knowledge of there are these serial killers uh, named Fred and Rosemary West, um, who are real life historical serial killers. And it's really tragic and awful reading about the, the cases of the many murders of uh, young women that they um, that they perpetrated. And uh, so, uh, so yeah, so there's this sort of threat in the, the background while she's traveling around the country. And I think it's really more about how the people who are most vulnerable in our society are people who are working class or like young women. So like the character of this novel and how they're really preyed upon, um, you know, by people who want to take advantage of them. And I think the the author might have actually encountered the serial killers in her, her life. So uh, yeah, it sounds like a very bracing story. Helen and the Grand Bees by Alex Morel. This is a novel I actually started reading several months ago, and I was reading a digital copy of it. And I just sort of got distracted and I meant to go back to it, but didn't ever. Um, but it's just been published finally. And it's um, so now I have a physical copy of it. It's reminding me I want to get back to it. So it's about a woman named Helen who uh, has a baby um, that has a skin color which is different from her own. And Helen suffers from a number of sort of like social problems and it's decided it's best if she gives up her baby for adoption. And then 20 years later, um, when the, the baby grows up to be a young woman, um, she decides she wants to be reunited with her mother and she seeks her out and finds her. And they um and they have this reconciliation and start this uh, a relationship um with a uh, parent-child relationship with each other and so it follows that uneasy new bond that they find especially because her daughter has a number of relationship problems and and then starts having children of her own so yeah it's a very interesting uh novel and and uh, yeah one i want to go back to soon and then finally i have the new novel by jody pico called the book of two ways and this is about a woman who works as a death doula which is a profession i've never heard about before but is someone who helps people that are in the final uh days and years of their life uh make that transition peacefully and uh so so this woman uh, has a traumatic encounter in her life where on an airplane uh, an airplane she's on crashes and she survives that crash but then it makes her reconsider her life and the choices she's made and so it's about this sort of like juxtaposition between the choices we make going into death and then the choices we made you know in the course of our life and I've never read a novel by Jodi Pico before and I don't know if I'll get along with her fiction or not um, let me know if if you've read any of her books before and if you'd recommend them and if you think her style would you know be my kind of, of writing I'd be interested to know your opinion on that uh, so those are all the books I have to talk about let me know uh, if you've read any of these books or if you're interested in reading any of these books in the comments below it would be lovely to have a chat with you uh, about any of them or or any new books that you have got recently and that you're really excited about so I'll talk to you again soon thanks for watching and happy reading everyone Bye.